Hey guys, Stell here, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Today it's another 3v3 tournament match, and the rules are, in case you're not familiar with them, 3 versus 3, 3,000 starting points for the whole team, no income. This is going to make it a lot more difficult for members of the team to reinforce positions or to absorb losses that you are inevitably going to take. Today we are watching Razman Balanced and Putin 187. They're playing Blue 4 versus the buff Anzac team on Red 4. Um, it's not the first time that Razman's team has played this map in particular, and you can probably find their video on the uh, channel from Razman. I'll link to it down below in the description. You can actually see how these guys are approaching it, what they're thinking is during the match. So I would very much recommend that you also check out their video. Now, previously they went for a very aggressive um, opening slash move towards the right on Golf and Charlie. This time around they're doing something different. And it is going to be very interesting how they use this highway. Because it is highway to Seoul, and the highway is always a bit of a, a risky venture. Because it is lower in the ground, it's lower in the terrain. Which makes it difficult to actually get a good line of sight onto it. And you can use that in the sense of sneaking units by it. But similarly, other teams can make the same mistake or the same use of it. And they can try to push units through it as well. So always make sure you have something covering this highway. Or it's going to be the end of the road for you. Pun intended. Hey, I'm becoming a dad. I have to work on my dad jokes. Anyway. We have the units from uh, Death Charge going towards Delta. Let's see what these guys are using. Hello, Stealth. Hello, Putin. <laughs> Sometimes people put these markers in. Uh, Balanced is saying it's 4 a.m., so it's really early for him. That's dedication right there, playing your tournament matches at 4 in the morning. Uh, Ninja One using T55s. We got the uh, WD-43. I always think it says WD-40, but that's something else. This is uh, Sapukai. Ninja One... Yeah, here we go. Ninja One Finland. Death Charge. Uh, China, and what's the last one? Uh, Sepukai, is that the Czech? Yeah, probably the Czech. We have a couple of MH24Ds grouped up. Uh, surprisingly not hovering over the trees. In case you don't know the tactic, if you hover them over the trees, they don't have to go through the takeoff animation, which is going to save you a few seconds, which especially early on in the battle can be very important. Now on blue four, we have Razman paying Israel. Sorry, playing Israel. I'm not sure why I said paying Israel. We got balanced with the West German deck, and we have uh, where are you? Put in 187 using the Danish. Interesting units which are being deployed. The NM142s in combination of two units. These are fantastic HGM vehicles. I'm not too big a fan of the launching vehicle because it seems to be just an M113 with an upgrade. But the HGM itself, the TOW-2, very accurate, very decent range, and nice firepower. 25 AP. They seem to be going for a land grab with uh, a Maglan team and the Anafa. Tiger scouting out on the right. And if you recall the last game, that's when the French HGM units landed in Charlie pretty early, and were able to knock out a few vehicles pretty quick, potentially with the infantry still inside. This time around, it is Israel, which is once again going left. But it seems to be the Germans and potentially the Danish, which are going to be operating in Golf and Charlie. Red Forest scouting out with an MI, uh, sorry, a MiG-21 BIS. And they are making use of their MIATs to grab land pretty deep into Delta. The real challenge is to hold on long enough with the infantry for their rest of the units to support and come in. They have, what is that, Luzandui? Yeah, Luz Andui 90, taking up a position through the tree line here, and the other MIAT is even farther ahead, and the Luz Andui are being dropped off here as well. The MIAT is interestingly landed, which is making it impossible to spot for any planes, but unlike last time, Razman's team is not using any planes to scout. Ram Ricky taking a position. That's the Magalan team. There is another Magalan team that just came out of the Anafa. And they're using the ENF as a picket line over here in Echo. 
Now immediately, as the Merkava 3B pushes forward, there is a smoke screen coming up from the Liege. And this is going to allow that Merkava 3 to operate very aggressively. The smoke screen is being put up just behind the tank as it continues to move up. And this is allowing the tank to be very, very aggressive in its maneuvers. Over on the right, the Germans have taken the forest. We got the Fuchs, and they're about to encounter the Finnish special forces. Oh, sorry, the Finnish forces. I don't believe that the uh, Reniko are special forces, but these guys definitely are. It looks like Ninja One is not very aggressive in his deployment, though. Maybe he's still waiting for forces. Well, there are some forces coming in. Hold on, they have two CVs. This might have been a miscommunication. They have two CVs sitting in this sector. One of them should have already been moving to uh, to either Charlie or Delta. But I think it got left behind. This one seems to be parked in a defensive position, but the one from Sapukai, I'm not sure why it's still there. Now, there is a bit of skirmishing that's about to happen over here in Delta. Red 4 has captured the sector using the ZZZ-701. And the rest of the Chinese forces are bracing for impact because they're about to be engaged by the Israeli forces. Merkava 2A from Razman with a grenade launcher. Rova 8 taking position to move to the left forest. And do they know that something is coming in? Yeah, they do. There's quite a bit moving forward here. It's CV-9030 ends from uh, Putin 187. And the guys are getting carefully dropped off. Well, maybe not so carefully, because they're just getting murdered by the Chinese tanks over here. Merc of a 3B, probably hoping to help out, but can't quite get there. Tree lines might be blocking line of sight over here. Rov 8 are pushing the Zanshi back, but at the same time they have to push forward, because otherwise those ZTZ-85 2As are coming forward, and same will the ZTQ. These Rov 8 guys seem to be having a really rough day. It's about to be made worse if the Luzandui 90 push forward. And as we have a clash happening in Delta, it's also going to be happening in Charlie. Because if Ninja One's not playing aggressive, then Balanced will. And he's pushing forward right into the Yekari. The Eriks uh, are going to be next. CV... no, sorry, Martyr 2s are assisting. And he has done this before. The Martyr 2s have been in this position before on the previous uh, gameplay that I featured from this team. And then they were very effective. They might meet their match in the form of the 185 KTs, although the 185s have far less armor at the front than the Martyr 2. So it's going to take the 185 a few more shots to go through the Martyr 2 in the first place. Still seeing a double CV here. Razman's team could be put under pressure if Blue 4 puts a CV here. Now, this is what I mean with the lower highway. You got the Leopard 1A5's NO2's, which are just flanking the Chinese tanks. The Chinese tanks are trying to turn around as quickly as possible. Before they're actually able to pull the trigger, the 185, sorry, the 1A5's are pulling back. Very nice use of that slope there. They got one. The tank is now reorienting itself towards the threat. The 1A5's are making another move. Coming back up. The ZTZ is about to fire, and the 1A5s shoot it in the side and the front, and it's down. And now the 1A5s have completed their objective, removing the pressure over here on the CV-9030s. That's going to make it a bit easier for them to support their stormers. Now, Death Charge knows that something's up here and probably doesn't like it too much. So he's marking this position for potentially bombing runs or at least further offensives. Looks like most of the Israeli forces got kicked out here, including the Maklan team there. And Razman has the Merkava 3B, the Merkava 2A, and the Machbet left. But beyond that, infantry-wise, he's a bit low. And there goes the Merkava 2. Or was it 3? I don't know. A Merkava died over there. The NM142s are still alive, but this terrain is difficult to use. The 1F5s are pulling back again. In reverse, going up another slope. And back down again. <laughs> this is making great use of this highway. I really like that. Red 4 has a decent air patrol up. And they're bringing in another command unit. 
even though they still had one in reserve. Blue 4 pushing around with the uh, Panzer Bill. This thing can uh, do 560 kilometers range, so it should be able to get all the way across. But Red 4 has a bit of a picket line here with a Sissy and an XA-180. There's also another XA-180 coming in from Putin-187, but it's going to take a while before these get to the front line. Now, Blue 4, 13 conquest points. Red 4, 4 points. And the CV... I think has died. I did see it come in, but I think it got killed off. And once again, the Leopard 185s are making great use of the tree line. This time to get the better of a T-72 Wilk. Firing a couple of shots, pulling back out. XA-186's NO is moving forward, and they might just drive all the way around and come in from the flank of Bravo. So again, expert use of that highway. It's really... This is what I mean. It's a, you're, it's like watching art when you, you see these guys play. They make it look so easy. Now, it looks like the Germans are at a bit of a standoff with the Finnish. One of the martyrs is dead. The other martyr just took out a 185. Still plenty left here from Ninja 1. But the real problem is over here, as the 186 NOs are pushing in. Fortunately, somehow, the Falskam Jaeger here have survived. The same here. 10, or was it 11 out of 15 Falskam Jaeger have survived that conflict. Uh, they're probably not about to survive the rest of it. The Commandosi are standing by to push these Falskam Jaeger back. The other Falskam Jaeger are being pulled back into a better position. But this is definitely going to cause Red Force some issues. Q5D is coming in. Apparently unaware of the Falskam Jaeger underneath them, otherwise they probably would have bombed them. And it looks like the Machbet might be able to stun it. No, actually shoot it down. Okay, that's the Q5D gone. Syria 30 and 21 Bis on patrol. Syria 30 looking for a good kill on a tank. Maybe the Merc of a 2, but they probably just lost line of sight on it. Now, Blue 4 has almost nothing left in Delta and Echo. They have one Maglan. One Merkava 2A and a Turan 5 Blazer, and that is it. If Red 4 knew this, they would probably be a lot more aggressive. But then again, I'm watching this in neutral. These guys are actually playing the game, so they have far less information than I do. Let's see, are these guys clashing yet? I'd say the Panzer Bill died. And unless Putin drops off this infantry, the Sissy are going to kill these guys again. What the hell? There we go. Yep. Sissy immediately went elite. No survivors from the XA-180. Red 4 again brought in a command vehicle. And it looks like Blue 4 knows exactly where it is. They just have to bring out something that can hit it. And the M110 can do it. Potentially the Mar 290 could do it. But I think the 110 might be the better candidate for this job. CV-9030s reversing. We still got the Falskam Jaeger over here. And they're very successful at keeping the Zanshi pinned down and stunned. Meaning that this CV is going to be the next target. Unless the Commandosi intervene and force the Falskam Jaeger out. Falskam Jaeger using their Eriks, taking out a reconnaissance vehicle. P on PSV is trying to get shots back at them. But they seemingly have... No, they still have line of sight. They can still see the Falskam Jaeger. Firing again, missing this time around. Putin 187 now also making a move onto the flank here of Charlie. And this time around, it's going to be very rough for the German, sorry, for the Finnish forces here. Command infantry is going to get, a f uh, well, just almost drove over by the Lux. There you go, command infantry down. Blue for at a plus one. Still got their CV double stacked. Not necessarily a bad choice, but you could move one to Echo. And remove the, the bleeding of the points. Stop the bleeding. T-72 seemingly having potentially taken out one of the NM-142s. NM-142 tried to fire back. Did not get away with it. Maglans are now trying to keep that T-72 at bay. Using their spike. They get one shot, but they don't get the other. 
The NM142, however, is at a decent range. Far enough away, but as the missile is in the air, the Seria takes out the launching vehicle, and with that, the guidance is gone and the HGM fails. Now, the right flank is completely locked down by Blue 4. So if the Stormer, getting support from the, from the Leo 1A5s, will get close enough to the Wilk and the T-55, they can take complete control of this side of the highway. Shouldn't be too hard, although the T-55M has better reconnaissance and is more capable of getting spots on first. Well, Leopard 1A5 took out the T-72. T-72 was already wounded. And the Lukes and CV-9030 quad stack even are pushing up and seemingly going directly towards Alpha. Or at least out of Delta. Sorry, Charlie. Delta's here. Razman has dropped off a couple at over 8, using Zelda to run 5 Blazer in support. It's going to be hard for Red to push here. I'm not seeing a Red for Mortar. Which is something that I would pretty much always want to have in Delta or Echo, or preferably both. Because they have these tree lines and you really need support from a smokescreen to get closer. MI-24D probably getting detected by the Lux. And the Lux is holding position because that's a bit more than it can chew off. Um, there's no another 24 d coming in. If the Lux can hold fire and the CV-9030s can take it down, then they can keep going. Fuel could be a problem for the 9030s at this point. Razman once again on the move with the Rov-8. Very, very little support here. Machbet taking down, I think, both of the MI-24s. Maybe with some support from the 1930s. Now, there are 10 minutes left in this replay, so I really wonder how they're going to spend the rest of the time. 551 getting side shot by the Turan 5 Blazer. Markova 2A only has a few shots left, but that's not really why you get it. You get it because of the grenade launcher, or at least that's my reasoning behind it. That's why I sometimes use this tank, although it is really quite expensive as a way to drop off infantry. Marine Jaeger, interesting unit. I don't really recall ever having seen one of these in the tournament so far. Sniper team, exceptional stealth. Very useful for scouting out positions without getting detected. And there is quite a lot of reconnaissance being used by Blue 4 here. Turan 5 Blazer, Marine Jaeger, Maglan, Scout Leopard, BGS. They really try to get a lot of info. Balance has his 2A5 on a position here on the side. Could use a bit of fuel. There is a uh, logistics group coming up. So maybe that's going to go towards the 2A5 and resupply it. Now, red, what are you going to do? Because blue has way more units. And red still has some units left. Maybe some points in reserve. There's the CV. But I don't think that this match is going to take too much longer. There is a CV heading towards, I think, Echo. Blue 4 might not have too many units left. But they do have that plus one. It's about to stop, though, as the WD-43 comes in. Captures it and neutralizes the plus one. But at that point, the damage might have been done. Looks like the 110 is shelling this position, hoping to get the CV killed off. I really love that flank over here with the Leopard 1A5s. That was brilliant. Look at this Anafa just fly in. Holy shit. It is getting engaged by the PKM and the AKM from the uh, Suiadauchi. And if they get too close, then the HQ-61 is also going to join the party. And they just killed it. They got... Oh, <laughs> that thing nearly crashed on top of the CV. There's the helicopter. There's the CV. It's not unheard of to have helicopters or planes crashing on top of the unit that you are actually trying to kill. I have had it happen that CVs have suddenly died after somebody dropped a helicopter on them. Unintentionally. Now, the XA-180, which was defending this side with the sissy team, is pushing up. 
Maybe they can get a flank on Hotel. The M110 is not exactly capable of doing direct fire. But then again, Red 4 has, still has a pretty large stretch of road ahead of them before they're able to get to Hotel. And even then, Blue 4 might still have some points in reserve to make sure that they can get units back into the fight when they need them. They're cleaning up Red 4's position here pretty quickly. Murkova still has a couple of rounds left. There's an almost fresh T-72 coming in. Taking a shot at Rovit and wiping out half the survivors here. I'm still waiting for those 1930s to make a move. 2A5 is coming to help out against the T-72. Leopard once again being provided smokescreen. Look at that. It just cleared the cover and immediately is getting smoked up. That's the HS-30 from Balanced. Magalan opening up the spike. Trying to land a missile on the Wilk and getting it. Wilk's not too impressed with it, but I would recommend that it doesn't try to do that too many times. It's trying to fall back. Takes another hit and now it's getting worried. Infantry over here dying. But we still got the Zeldas to push forward and the Merc of a 2 and the 2A5. And that's going to be very rough for Red 4. And now the 1930s are pushing in. If these guys drop off all their infantry and these, the 1930 IFVs are able to support against the Commandosi, then it's going to be pretty painful for Red Force Commandosi here. Red Force still has the CV in here. It's just behind a tree. It's, <laughs> it's camping bush. <laughs> Pretending to be a... A bit of a bushy patch over there, but I think that blue four is not even going to try and find that one. Because if they can find this one, then that's all that they need. They also have the leopards in a supporting position and a leopard one. A recon leopard 1A1 being pushed forward. However, I hope it's going to get to that fob, otherwise it's going to run out of fuel. Here come the infantry, a couple of stormers. One stormer going up on the left, two stormers going up on the right. Trend 5 Blazer seems to be getting engaged by the Wilk. It survived an impact. They got a couple of... <laughs> Blue Force units are everywhere at this point. They're flanking Bravo. They're pushing through Delta. They're moving around the edges over here of Echo. It's really rough to play against a team like Rasman, Balance, and Putin 187. But at the same time, watching it is just glorious. It's just a sort of steady dismantling of Red Force positions. It's, it's both incredibly intimidating <laughs> watching these guys play, and at the same time glorious so you can see what you can learn from them and how they play. I'll try and do that Leopard 1A5 or something similar push over there at some point, if I play this map. Commandosi getting a really rough treatment from the Leopards and the CV-9030s and the Stormer. This is really rough. Commandosi are trying to hold out as long as possible, but the command unit over here has died. I'm not sure if it was the Stormer, but I think it might have been the Zeldas which took it down with machine gun fire. They also took down the CV and Echo, putting them at a plus two. And I think we're going to see Red 4 just surrender. Because they got nothing left. A bit of anti-air, reconnaissance, and over here, one Sopal and a command unit. There goes Death Charge, and I really can't blame him. Ninja one, and that means that Seppukai is the last survivor. Sopal dies, Martyr 2 pushes in, kills the command infantry, or command vehicle, and done. Total victory for Razman's team. Again, incredibly intimidating, but also glorious to behold. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle. If you want to see it from Razman's perspective, then by all means, check out his channel. Link down below in the description. And let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you soon for more videos.